from my perspective, uh, President Biden is doing uh, a very good job. There is more that can be done to increase uh, pressure and stress, additional sanctions, uh, more in the way of lethal aid. And now that uh, there has been a pushback, thanks to the brave Ukrainian uh, military uh, offensive action, uh, there is time to resupply uh, the Ukrainians so that they can uh, continue to defend their country. I wonder if she called him at 3 o'clock in the morning to tell him he was doing a good job. Uh, Hillary Clinton praising President Biden for his handling of the war in Ukraine, but in the next breath saying that there is more that the United States can do in the region. So not exactly a compliment from her. The comment coming the same day we began seeing the horrific images of a mass slaughter and torture of citizens in Bucha. That's a town just outside of the capital city, Kiev. And another warning, we are about to be showing some graphic images as we discuss this. Power panel now. David Avella, GOPAC chairman. Jason Nichols, University of Maryland professor of African studies. This is pretty simplistic in terms of the politics of this. David, I come to you first. Even Hillary Clinton is on the bandwagon of we're not doing all that we could. The single most important thing we could be doing is keeping the American economy strong. Harris, to be able to provide humanitarian aid, to be able to provide military aid, we need a strong economy. And unfortunately, the president is playing by the playbook that gives us just the opposite. Higher energy prices, increasing government spending, more taxes. It doesn't make our economy strong. It doesn't make our global allies' economy strong. And if we're going to help Ukraine, we got to make sure our economies are strong. And that's where the president is harming Ukraine the most. Well, that's an interesting way of putting it. Uh, Jason, the bigger picture in all of this, though, with regard to energy is that the ruble has bounced back in Russia. And those sanctions that the president said were going to be so crippling in a month, well, it's 40 days now. So which day of the month are we waiting for with President Biden? Well, first of all, thank you for having me, Harris. Uh, Biden's response to Ukraine has been praised by Republicans as well as some of the president's, uh, you know, including some of the president's most ardent critics like Mitch McConnell and Lindsey Graham. Uh, Ukraine has gotten $2 billion worth of aid from the Biden administration. I think they've also committed to giving another $500 million in aid, including humanitarian and lethal aid. Uh, I think that this administration has done really well. The people who say that they want more uh, I don't know exactly what they're looking for other than well, getting Hillary into Clinton a more direct you. conflict. She, well, she told I, you I, what I would, she wanted. I would disagree. Uh, I would disagree. I think that we've had very, these are the strongest sanctions that have ever been levied against any nation you ever. You think they're working? Uh, and I think sanctions take a long time to work. So uh, longer so, than a month? Yeah, I do think that they take uh, a long time to really take effect because the Biden, so he the, was uh, wrong. Putin, Putin understood that this was coming and he gave himself mm -hmm. about 600 billion dollars in reserves so the russian economy hasn't exactly collapsed but we've seen jobs disappear from russia we've seen the ruble you're saying it came back but the ruble is not as strong well, as it, it hasn't was. come back all the way it has bounced yeah, it back, back because russia close. because not russia close, is allowed Paris. to still sell its energy which is part and parcel the point that also uh, david is making that we need to the United, be energy independent. The United States does not buy Russian oil any longer. And uh, we're I think we're, we are doing but other people what we are. can. To it hasn't hurt Ukraine. them that much. All right, let's move on. Uh, trans and gender issues now at the center of a culture war between Republicans and Democrats. Both political parties say they hope to use those issues to rally their bases ahead of the midterm elections. Well, it's already happening. The White House rolled out a full slate of events for Transgender Day of Visibility last week. Just days earlier, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signed the Parental Rights in Education Bill into law. And now he's in a heated battle with Disney. The massive firm is looking to overturn that law. And also caught on video pushing a woke gender agenda. When you're trying to impose a woke ideology on our state, you know, we view that as a significant threat. This wokeness will destroy this country uh, if we let it run unabated. So in Florida, we take a very big stand against that. Yeah, the shareholders don't like this one. Disney shareholder says big time over it. Stop wasting shareholders money on political crusades. Disney's management succumbed to political pressure from activists on the left. And now it's getting hit from the left and the right. If I weren't a shareholder, 
I'd find it amusing. David. This is an issue, Harris, that tends to reinforce voters' values more than single-handedly turning a voter out. That it is the crisis we have at the border, the increase that people are paying every day and everyday items. It is the health care they're now dealing with because of the lockdowns that they couldn't do uh, during COVID that will drive their vote and make them want to go vote. Uh, all that said, what is, will be interesting to watch is how this issue divides the Democratic base. That is, you see evangelical, Hispanic, and African-American voters looking at a party and saying, is this really what I believe? To a Supreme Court nominee in Brown Jackson who doesn't know whether she's a bi or says she's not a biologist, so can't tell you whether one is a male or a female. To those who are in the progressive movement pushing this ideology. Quickly, uh, I'll just get your response, Jason. Well, there are some places where I think we'll agree. Um, I think one of the things that's a real tragedy, we have uh, LGBT youth are four times as likely to attempt suicide. Trans mm. youth are twice as likely to drop out of high school. But Republicans want to have a conversation about who won a trophy at an amateur swim meet uh, rather than some of these issues that would actually save lives. If they really are interested in, in helping all kinds of people, women and others, then they should right. be uh, getting at these kitchen table issues. Parents are involved in this conversation. Remember what happened in Virginia to Democrats when they ignored parents. We'll move on to Outnumbered after the break. Gentlemen, thank you.